plenty of it in Toma, Wisconsin. Just head northwest of Madison, 92 miles, and you found a slice of summer heaven. Pass me the Sudafed Pastorini. Hey, it Puller, looks like we're going to sneeze on that one. Tractor pullers, this is not only the number one network, but the number one tractor pull in this entire sport. Randy Peter will be our next puller, but first, let's go back to Charlotte and see what kind of fun they're having. We really are paying a lot of attention. We really are. It's, yeah. it's really cool. I mean, we are. We're Speak trying. for yourself. I've actually been to some tractor <laughs> pools, okay? Have you? You've been to a tractor pool? one. Was it, was it cool? Did you it like it? It was loud. It is but loud. I like it very loud. But it is. It's, it's very high tech. It's amazing how many... I can't figure out why they're saying turbines, though. Aren't turbines <laughs> something to wear in your head? <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll figure all that out a little bit later, right? Yeah. We're going to come back. More of that great tractor pool action from Wisconsin. Coming up next year on Friday Night Motor Madness. scares me. I got it breaks. Uh, so, turbine? Turbine. Turbine, you say tomato, I say tomato. Well, well, the turbine part sounds like the hat. The turbine, I don't know. Let's <laughs> let's ask the pros, uh, you know, Steve Evans, Dan Pastorini, we're, we're having this little uh, discussion about turbine engines or why turbine. are you not saying turbine? Well, I can tell you, Katie, they came out of Vietnam-era helicopters. Uh, one guy who I don't believe was in Vietnam, but he gets in an awful lot of trouble is Tim Wilson. Where are you, Tim? Uh, Hey, I tell you, you can't have a tractor pull unless you pay the band, and I found one. I'm here with the director of the band, lead singer. What are you, the director? Lead singer? You bet. Are you, the, are you the one that gets the women here, Chip? Uh, yeah. Chip Schrader, director of the Toma High School Band. What are we going to play here, Chip? We're going to play the school fight song, Fight on for Toma. I have rep requisitioned Barbara's French horn, so here we go. Start us up here, Chip. One, two, one, two, three, six. There is no pucker in those cheeks. He I, is not playing that old. I guarantee you, there's no wind going through those lungs either. He plays a mean guitar. Now, right there, you see that pylon just to the right, etching off your screen? That is the mark to beat. That is Steve Klingenberg's 300.1, actually, point one of a foot past the full pull mark. And that is the challenge for Randy Petro next to pull. Randy Petro has a very interesting machine. It's named Multi Chaos. Listen to this, Steve. He's got four engines, two are Arius. One is a KB old, and one is a Rodak, all putting out 8,000 horsepower. Whatever you got laying around, right? Just bring it to the ranch and let's go run it. Tractors are pretty stupid. They really don't know if all the motors match or not. I don't think he really cares, just as long as he makes that 300-foot pull and gets it to pull off. Here's the hook. There's that wire switch. there is on a kill switch. In case that's the actual hook there, this led. that wire you saw will uh, just enable the electronics should it ever come apart from the sled and it'll stop right in its track. There you see it right there. All those different motors in one track. Look at the layout of the, those motors. I mean, they're going every which way. We're on board now. All he has to do, these are centrifugal clutches, is step on that gas. The clutches will lock up and he can apply the power however much or however little he wants. Well, he went hammer down at 30 feet. He's coming up too. He's got a real good bite out there. Let's see if he can keep the front end down. Oh, he's going to go way past the middle. No, no, just a little short. Well, Randy always says it's like riding a bull, and that was pretty darn close. He's dug himself quite a hole here, though. Officials conferring with him, and as soon as we get the laser readout, we'll let you know. There you can see the leader mark, and I don't believe he, he got to close. that. He, he was, was close. close. The sled has to travel that far, right? The front of the sled has to go past that mark, not right. the front of the trailer. Let's look at the replay here and see what happened. Great head-on shot, and here's where the balance is important. They got to ooh, a little too high, maybe. Real too much by what happened on the what came loose there on the on the bottom. I, I thought I saw something come between the axle, the rear axle there. I couldn't see, but he got a little sideways here, and hard to steer when the wheels are up in the air. Here's the other angle. Uh, no, he he's got real good bite, but look at that thing pulls to the left. That torque is unbelievable. And as you see that box move forward on the sled, that's what brought him to a halt. That yep. sled is the arch enemy. Randy Petro, 285. Point three, Bob Gerald. 285.3 feet, and Randy is getting that helmet off. And uh, actually, Randy not looking at us, so looks like we're going to meet him around the backside here. 285 feet, and I don't know if you're going to be happy with that or not. Are you happy with that pull? Well, first, we rode the brakes the whole time. Uh, this tractor usually uh, runs a lot better with this setup than that, but uh, really, for as bad as we was on the brakes, it's not a bad run, but I think we could have got out there a little farther, but we. You can probably even smell the brake, it's so hot. 
Well, that's a tough one for him because it doesn't look like he's going to make it into the pull-up, guys. He could possibly, if Art Arfons decides to pull again, that could be number three. Don't forget, coming up, the heavy metal, the big rig pullers. That is the Blue Ox, an absolutely awesome machine with four, count them, four turbochargers. I can't wait. We'll be back. And the cranberry bog you're looking at has itself been producing cranberries since 1936. It'll be flooded and harvested in September. And I don't know about you, but my kidneys feel better just being here. Funny there's no turkeys around a cranberry sauce field. Kidneys. <laughs> yes, there is. He was holding a microphone. First the cheese, then the cranberries. That boy's whole career seems to be bogging down. You know, our next puller is going to be Gardner Stone, a legend. And after three years in retirement, the former champion is bringing back one of his most powerful tractors of the circuit, his 12,000 horsepower General Stage 4. Coming back after three years is a challenge Gardner is eager to tackle. Gardner Stone is a man who thrives on challenges. At work, it meant putting the names GMC, Ford Mercury, and Hummer under one dealership. At play, it means always pushing to break new ground. The challenge is making it work, is, is putting all these different things together, whether it's my dealership with three or four franchises together, or it's our racing uh, in the tractor pulling, doing it different. But ultimately, the, the challenge is then beating your competitors. At a time in life when many of his competitors are getting out of racing, Gardner is expanding his race team's activities. I enjoy anything that's motorized, competitive, and makes a lot of noise. I thrive on being an individual. Uh, I don't like to necessarily follow the crowd. Uh, in tractor pulling, I uh, run with the turbocharged Allisons. We got up as far as three Allisons turbocharged in one tractor. Uh, in the Unlimited class, we're running now with four jet turbines, which when we did this originally back in 89, it was the only tractor ever built with four turbines. Gardner tackled numerous challenges in creating a four-turbine tractor, not the least of which was harnessing the power of 12,000 horses and delivering that force to the track. I just enjoy being different. I, I don't want to be like the crowd. I don't want to be like anybody else out there. Uh, I like to beat somebody, but beat them differently. Making this tractor work was a tremendous challenge. My next challenge will be winning another unlimited grand national title after three years of retirement. And he is serious. You know, Steve, he's come in here with four T-55 jet turbine engines with 12,000 horsepower. Now, we saw the other turbines. They didn't perform like this. Look at the fire out of the stacks. Unbelievable. JP-4, he unleashes four turbines is the sled oh, up to run. Gardner Stone. He's going to run out of the stadium if he doesn't stop here pretty soon. That's a great run. An outstanding pull. Gardner has not lost his touch. Not at all. Not after three years. Let's go down to Tim Wilson. Tim, you saw that pull. Get a little hot down there for you, buddy. Man, it's hot. I'm stuck in between the engines of this tractor down here. I'm with Judy Knipstein. Judy, her crew is her daughters, Jody and Angie. Judy, what kind of engines have you got in this? Got a four, five, twenty-six, keep black Oldsmobiles. And you have never run these engines before. They, this is the first time they're going to be cranked. This is a maiden voyage for these new engines. My husband Lynn decided we'd start a new, try a new configuration this year. So, throw away the book. We're starting all over, brand new. What do you call this contraption? Well, we don't have a name for it yet. If you'd like to name it, give us some ideas or suggestions. We call it a lot of things, but none I can mention. Hey, I got a name. Her name is Knipstein. Let's call it the conniption. What do you think, Steve? I think that's very clever. I think she should consider that. There is Gardner Stone. Let's have a look at the pull that netted him third spot so far at 294.3. Well, it looked like a real good run, Steve. He kept it nice and straight, but that sled seemed to take over at the end of the run there and just stopped him just a few a few feet short of a, of a full pull here. And look how those tires contour. It almost like a top fuel. They, they the do lights. look like a top fueler, don't they? Look here now. Here's a different angle. Nice and straight. The wheels are down. He must have gone back to the, the trailer over there and added a little more front weight to that thing. I think you're right. Bobby, you can tell Gardner he's third for the pull-up at 294.3. 
Gardner Stone, you are third right now with 294.3 on the last one. And so, do you think you're going to be able to hold up here? I don't know. I had a motor quit right on the line just as I took off. And there's some good competitors behind me. I doubt if this will hold. All right. It'd be disappointing if it didn't hold up for Gardner Stone because he certainly did do a nice job on that last poll, Stephen Dan. Well, Dan, next up is Judy Knipstein. Let's forget, not forget, rather, that is Katie Haas's pick from Charlotte. And Katie has uncanny luck. She's going to be pulling for her all the way from Charlotte. I know that. <laughs> she was the first lady to win the Enderly pull off, one of the biggest pulls in the sport back in 1996. And remember, there is a maximum weight on these tractors of 7,600 pounds. In any other form of motorsports, we deal with minimum weight here that's that's true you know I, drag racing kind of killed me because i was always too much weight I, I was too heavy i couldn't drive those cars and, and but i might be able to make a come to uh, come back here in tractor pulling who knows weight is a distinct advantage okay we are going to see art arfons let's remember that he was able to drop from being test puller down to number six so he will pull before judy now he had what 285.6 feet didn't like it no nope. and it's a good thing because had he taken that pull he would not be in the pull-off as of this moment no he actually was still pulling at the end of his run but he just was getting too far left and, and got out of uh, line there we've got the onboard camera here we'll be able to see the the fire up of these uh, these turbine engines here but I guarantee you went back and must have added much more uh, front end weight on this thing to keep the front end down let's see if he can hook it up a little bit better this run he's gonna have to run well over 290 feet if he's going to make it into tonight's pull-off I wonder if they can detune these motors like a like a V8. They can actually. It's done with a fuel valve. How much fuel goes into the motor definitely uh, determines how much power it will make. Sounds like a giant hair dryer, doesn't it? Sounds like the Cleveland Airport. <laughs> Has he got some problems? Checking his instrumentation, looking down. Uh, got a little fire there. These things aren't easy to start, especially after they get heated up a little bit. They need to cool down to to fire him up so he might not have had enough time in between runs here to get the, to get the time to cool it the biggest advantage to owning one of these turbines is low maintenance the only problem they really experience and you see it in the unlimited hydroplanes as well is what they call a compressor stall they get a compressor stall in them sometimes they get a little erosion and corrosion on their vein blades and uh, but they're they're pretty dependable engines mm -hmm. you noted the big plexiglass disc on the back wheels always a showman you know, Art, I'm sure, wants to win this. Uh, he just celebrated on June 14th his golden anniversary. And the only man to survive a 600-plus mile an hour crash on the Bonneville Salt Flats. He's got a simple approach. His strategy is go further than anyone else. <laughs> and his daughter, I like it. Yeah, absolutely. His daughter, Dusty, is the crew chief on this tractor. She also has her own machine that will be competing later in the weekend. It's a only has two turbines in it. Yeah, it's just a, a small little little baby. Yeah. yeah. In fact, she just had a baby and got back on the tour. That's right. She's been off the circuit for a while. They're giving Arfon some time to get set. He deserves it. Normally, they will favor the inside of the lane, just the way this particular piece of property drains. But here we see Arfon's pretty much right in the center. I guess you'd have to call Art the big daddy of the tractor pulls, wouldn't you? He's, Absolutely. He's got too many racing trophies to win. He's got something wrong there. It doesn't look right. A little smoke coming out of there between the housing. Smoke. And he's concerned about it. He is looking at the heat indicators on those turbines, and it's very obvious that Art Arfons has a problem. Let's hope that one of the most well-liked men in this sport can make it go. It looks like he's going to the throttle now. He is off. Smoke it all. There he goes. Look at the... There's a shot you won't see every day. That is a full bowl there, sir, and more. He took that rascal right out the back door. The crowd here in Toma, Wisconsin loves it. Congratulations, Grandpa. We'll be back for more from Wisconsin after this.